What is going on guys, DBG here, and with the recent market crash in NBA 2K18, my team, there is a lot of cheap diamonds. I know a lot of my videos have been more focused around the cheap amethyst, so in this video I'm going to be doing the top 5 cheap diamonds that you can get for under 15k MT. Yes, 15k MT is the most you are going to be spending on any of these diamonds. Like, I've been away for the last two weeks and just got home today. When I left, these were all cards good enough for God Squads. But anyway, now let's get on to the top five. As always with top five lists, rather than just doing all small forwards, I'm going to be doing one per position. And because of that, it's in no particular order. At the point guard position for 15 KMT, we've got Diamond 97 overall, Steph Curry. So Steph Curry is a 96 defense, 99 offense overall. He's got 14 Hall of Fame badges, which is unbelievable, including catch and shoot, acrobat, difficult shots. He's also got limitless range, which is good to have, and five goal badges as well. He's got, well, he's 6'3", so he's not too small for point guard. He's got a 98 driving layup. He's got an open shot mid of 98, open shot three of 99. His ball control isn't 99, but it's not far off. I'm not entirely sure what it is about the shoot. I picked one up with a shoe on him. He's got 92 lateral quickness, which is good. 97 steel, which is good. 87 on ball defensive IQ, not terrible. Driving at 36 though, not great, with a tendency of 45. His pink diamond is a much, much better dunker than his diamond. 96 speed, 98 speed ball, 96 acceleration. So this Steph Curry card is one of the top 10 point cards in this game. And you can pick him up for legitimately like 15K, depending on when you're looking at him. So Steph Curry has got hot zones everywhere on the floor. His release is cash as well. It's a release that I'm not the best with, but I've seen people at green every single open shot with Curry, so I gotta take that into account as well. Fadeaway jumper, wow, I really but having mistimed that one. Sorry, I'm playing with a little bit of lag because I'm using the phone hotspot. His fadeaway jumper is nice. Even if he mistimes it, his uh, ratings are so good that he will be able to hit a lot of them. And a fadeaway three is actually a decent enough option with him. Going to the basket, He's not really going to do... I wish he still did the uh, Curry scoop layup, which he used to do in NBA 2K16, where he drove in and um, did his like scoop signature scoop layup. I can't even uh, do it. I know Baron Davis does it, but I've never seen Curry do it this year, which is a little bit annoying. But one of the best shooters in the game and definitely great value. At the two for like 12K, the best value diamond in this game, it's Eddie Jones. Eddie Jones is a God Squad level player, 99 defense, 96 offensive overall. He's got eight Hall of Fame by just pickpocket, pick dodger, pick and roll monster, acrobat, posterizer, catch and shoot, deep branch Jedi, and corner specialist, as well as 14 goal badges. He's a 6'6'2 guard, so he's quite tall for that position. He's got 94 driving layup, he's got 95 open shot mid, 96 open shot three with a cash release. He's also got 92 ball control, which is really good as well. He's got, um, Great lateral quickness of 97, a great steal of 98 with Hall of Fame pickpocket. He's a 97 on ball defensive IQ as well. He's got a driving dunk of 95 with 10 super 100. 92 speed, 90 speed ball, 92 acceleration means he can play at the point guard and being 6 for 6 he can easily play at the 3. So yeah, Eddie Jones is an absolutely incredible card. And a lot of the time for less than 10k MT, you can't get much better than this card to be honest. Eddie Jones has hot zones nearly everywhere on the floor as well, just like Curry. Eddie Jones' release is so, so easy to time. His shot isn't as good as Curry's ratings wise, but he's one of the better shooters in the game. And off the catch and shoot, you can't get that much better. Going to the basket, he's an elite dunker, an elite finisher. He's going to be one of the best defenders you get in the game. His post fadeaway is lacking a little bit, but that doesn't really matter. And take away the post fadeaway, this is just a better version of Michael Jordan. At the three, we've got a card that was one of my favorite cards in the game when it came out and was used in my God Squad for ages, and it's George Gervin. So George Gervin has got 99 offense and 99 defense overall. He's 14 KMT. He's got six Hall of Fame badges, one man fast break, relentless finisher, acrobat, posterizer, tire to score, and difficult shots. He's also um, got eight other goal badges, including pickpocket, mid range, Jedi, catch and shoot, lob city finisher, and he's a six, seven, three, so he's a little bit small, but he can play at the two. To be honest, he can play at the one as well. He's at 94 post fade, 99 driving layup, 97 shot mid, 87 shot, or 88 shot three with a really nice release. He's got 95 free throw, 90 ball control. He's got great rebounding stats, 95 lateral quickness, a 90 steal, on ball defense, IQ of 90, driving dunk of 95 with a tendency of 100. 
He's also got 96 speed, 96 acceleration, 89 speed of ball. So he's going to be one of the faster players you use in this game. And George Gervin is just incredible. Like, this is a legitimate card that you may decide to use in a God Squad. And he's genuinely less than 15k MT. I honestly can't believe this card is that cheap. But he is, and this is an incredible, incredible card. So George Gervin is hot zones, most spots inside the three and two spots outside the three. George Gervin's release, in my opinion, is one of the nicest in the game. And there's a reason why he was a starting point guard off the bench for my um, God Squad lineup most of the time uh, on PC when he first came out. I, when he came out, I think he came out the same day as the Kawhi Leonard. I had George Gervin in over Kawhi Leonard on my PC team, which was crazy. He knew everything on offense, and he's also a good defender and quite tall. So an absolutely incredible, incredible card. And for the price, he's a must-buy this year. At the four, I'm going to put in a card that, before I left, I would have considered the best power forward in NBA 2K18 my team. And he's 13K MT. And it's Andre Karolinko. This is one of the most versatile cards in the game. 99 defense, 97 offense overall. He's with 5 Hall of Fame badges, all defensive badges, as well as 17 gold badges. His stats are incredible. He's 6'9", he can play at the 2 through 4. He's got a 94 driving layup, decent post hook and fadeaway. He's got a 95 open shot mid, 90 open shot 3 with a money release. He's got 86, sorry, 89 ball control so he can comfortably speed boost. He's got 89 offense, 93 defensive rebounding. He's got great passing stats. He's got 99 lateral quickness. He has 99 lateral quickness for a 6'9 player. 98 steal, 98 block, 98 on ball defense, 98 low post defensive IQ. 85 driving, no contending team, 80 is alright. 91 speed, 88 speed of ball, and 90 wing acceleration for a power forward. This is one of the most versatile cards in the game. He does everything well, and there's nothing this card does badly. And he does some stuff as well as any power forward in the game. Arguably the best defensive card in the game and arguably a top three or four power forward in the game Before they start releasing uh, the pink diamonds I would have considered him the number one power forward in the game and to be honest Anthony Davis is probably a bit better Dirk may be a bit better, but it's still comfortably in the top five in my opinion So Andre Karolenko has hot zones in ha about half the spots inside the three and three spots outside the three His release is cash in my opinion it's not a fast release, it's not a slow release. It has a little bit of a time to get used to it. It has a little bit of a learning curve. When you do, it is money. Again, the reason I'm not greening many of these or getting good releases in a lot of them is because of the lag. His pull-up game, his mid-range game, isn't ideal. Like, I would use him in purely catch-and-shoot situations. And at the center position, we have got Dave Cowens. Dave Cowens, definitely best to be ran at the power forward, just because he's... um. 6'9", with 14 Hall of Fame badges, including defensive stopper, rim protector, pick and popper, drop stabber, post spin ignition, um, and he also comes with 10 Hall of Fame badges, including a lot of shooting badges. Dave Cowens is 6'9", 99 offensive defense, but overall he's got 97 post hook and fade away, 95 driving layup, he's got an open shot mid of 94, shot 3 of 78, but his release is cash. I may not be able to hit the shoot around because I'm lagging a bit, but like when I was playing with no lag, he was greening everything. 90 free throw, he's at 99 dollars rebounding, 90 lateral quickness, 97 steal, 98 block, he's got 98 on ball defense, 98 low post defensive IQ, he's got a driving of 85 and intensity of 100, and he also has Dominique's dunk animations, which are crazy. He's at 83 speed, 81 acceleration, 60 HP of ball, which is not bad at all. And as far as cards to the power forward position go, this card is one of those underrated hidden gems that you just need to try out. So Dave Cowens is all hot zones inside the three and one hot zone outside the three. His release is one of the best in the game off the catch. I don't know what it's like off the dribble, and I don't really plan on finding out what it's like off the dribble to be honest, but off the catch, especially in the corners, it's money. He's a bit like Karl Malone from the corners. Remember the amethyst Karl Malone, where he wasn't the best three-point shooter, but if you got it with him in the corner, he'd make it every time. It's a bit like that with Dave Cowens, except Dave Cowens can shoot a little bit from the wing. I wouldn't uh, be reliant on him being a wing or a top three-point shooter, but from the corners with the 78 rating and a great mid-range, it's going to be good enough that you can't leave him open, and he will hit a lot of open threes that he gets in the corner, especially because of his release, he will green an awful lot of them. He's got a really nice fadeaway jumper as well, going both sides. I've actually had a good few fadeaway jumpers with him. Pull up from mid is not bad at all, but his dunking is the crazy part about him. He's got some of the best dunk animations in the game. 
and he will jam it on people. Like, he's got such a good dunk rating. He's dunked on so many people. And the craziest thing is, you get, like, a post spin. You're, say if you're here and you get the post spin, he will dunk so easily on people that it's one of the most fun cards I've used this year. One of the most underrated cards as well, and definitely a card you need to try out. And I'm also going to talk about one honorable mention that I picked up earlier today for 6.5 KMT. As far as I know, he's one of, if not the cheapest uh, diamonds in the game. And it's Dan Issel. So Dan Issel's stats are not the best. 99 defense, 97 offense overall. You're looking through these stats. Good shot me, good shot three. But like he doesn't seem like he's up to much. But again, I made an entire video on this guy about how good he is. And there's a reason why if you can make him up for like 6k MT, he is an absolute steal in NBA 2k team mighty. Dan Issel is hot zone basically everywhere. But the reason why he's on the list is not honorable mention is because of his release. He's got the generic release. And the reason I call it generic is that exact same release is used by about, I'd say maybe 10 to 15 cards. And a lot of the time late in the game, they'll just give it to random cards. They didn't do it as much this year. In 2K17, they gave it to so many cards. And I can't believe I'm mistiming so much. It's a little bit hard to time with the lag, but if you have no lag, this is the best release in the game. Straight up, the best release in the game. Dan Issel just barely misses from the corners, barely misses from three in general. Like if he's open, and you're not playing on lag, he is going to make every shot and you're going to green, I'd say about 30 to 40% of them. So anyway, that's the video. In my opinion, these are the top five diamond cards. You can pick up an NBA 2K18 in my team for less than 15K MT. And I do think there's cards that are better than Dan Issel that are less than 15K MT. For the fact that this card can be picked up for as low as 6K MT at times, I had to put it in as an honorable mention as potentially the cheapest diamond card in the game. Well, a little bit more expensive than Dennis Johnson, but that card, isn't at the level of a card like this but yeah that's the video thank you guys for watching please like comment and subscribe